Welcome back, dear traders. Let's discuss the red hot market review and the breaking news. Wall Street is continuing the global positive trend from Friday. Benchmark stock indexes closed with the confident gains on a Friday. The Dow Jones climbed 2.2%, the Nasdaq grew 1.8%, and the S&P 500 was 1.9% to close at 3,863 points. All three indexes were gaining ground at a brisk pace. The intraday carried off for the S&P is a scene between 3,820 and 3,940 points. Wall Street owes its optimistic tone on a Friday to strong U.S. retail sales that surpassed expectations. Besides, the consumer sentiment index by the University of Michigan was also upbeat and showed that consumers foresee a slowdown in consumer inflation. Fed officials came up with their comments on the fresh statistics after the inflation data revealed that the U.S. CPI had topped 9% for the first time in the last 40 years, traders rushed to speculate that the U.S. Fed might raise the interest rate by 100 basis points. Shortly after, some Fed officials made comments on the rate hike by 75 basis points at the meetings slated for July 26 and 27. Such remarks calmed down investors who overcame fears and shifted focus towards the eurozone. On a Tuesday, the European Union is due to report on its CPI. On a Thursday, the ECB is going to unveil its policy decision. As for the United States, traders will be alert to a manufacturing PMI by the Fed Reserve Bank of Philadelphia and the building permits. The Bank of America and uh, Goldman Sachs finally presented their corporate earnings reports. The Bank of America's profit per share came in at $0.73, below the forecast of $0.75. The net profit fell to $6.2 billion against $9.2 billion in the second quarter a year ago. The 34% contraction in the profits comes as a result of a sharp fall in revenue from investment and banking services. Goldman Sachs also reported lower-than-expected profits in the second quarter. Net revenue plunged 23% to $11.68 billion and profits dropped almost twice to $2.8 billion or $7.73 per share. Later in the week, investors will digest financial reports by Johnson & Johnson, Netflix and the Tesla. The US dollar index dropped off the highs of the last week and sank 0.58% to trade at 107.58. Today, the index is unlikely to make sharp moves. The European currencies are under the spotlight today as they are recovering in anticipation of the crucial inflation data. Thus, the US dollar index is expected to trade in the Canada between 106 and 107.70. The index tumbled as traders downgraded the expectations of the rate hike by 100 basis points. President of the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank, Rafael Bostic, and the president of the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank, James Bullard said on a Friday that they would vote for a rate hike by 75 percentage points in July for the second month in a row. Isn't pressure from the US Fed encouraged a revival in the stock market and hindered the stunning rally of the US dollar. Thus, um, this week investors will get to know CPIs for New Zealand, Canada, the European Union and the UK, as well as the fresh PMIs. Depending on the day readings market, participants could stoke recession fears and express risk aversion. All in all, the currency market, especially major currency pairs, could treat on the high volatility. Having climbed to the highest level in the two years in at 1.3200, the USD card pair went down. Today, the currency pay is trading below 1.30 as the Luni is extending its strength. The trading carried off for the pay is defined between 1.2890 and 1.2980. 
The Canadian dollar has been taking advantage of the US dollar's pause in the recovery in oil prices for the second day in a row. Canada is due to release its CPI and retail sales data later today. Oil prices resumed their rally after Bloomberg reported that President Joe Biden left the Middle East without any agreements. Joe Biden did not convince Mohammed bin Salman, the actual leader of Saudi Arabia, to expand oil output. Instead, ministers of Saudi Arabia stated that the kingdom would adjust oil drilling rates to the OPEC pact. The news at Bloomberg set oil prices in motion. Both benchmark rates managed to offset losses of the previous week. Brand crude gained 4.83% to trade at $106.10 per barrel, and WTI rose 4.94%. All digital assets in the crypto market are also gaining ground. Bitcoin is trading today above $22,100, but it's still early to speak about a new rally. Apart from Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies have appreciated notably. Ethereum has risen almost 10% to trade at $1,497. At the same time, the price level of $22,400 is a still an unrealistic target for the bulls. Uh, if uh, they manage, um, if um, um, buyers manage to challenge this level, the price will head for twenty-three thousand two hundred dollars. If no, Bitcoin could retreat back to twenty-two thousand dollars. To sum up, the New York pre-market suggests an optimistic trading session. We hope that the day will bring profits to you. See you tomorrow on InstaForex TV channel.